This is Geometry, Section 9.3, Pyramids and Cones. To begin this section, I'd like to first define what it means to be a conic solid. What that is, is the set of points between a given point, we'll call that the apex, you can see that right here, and all the points of a given region, its base, together with the apex and the base. So as you can see, from here is this point, all the way to where it meets the, meets the edge of my base. We break that down into two pieces like we did with the cylindrical solids, we break it this one into pyramids and cones. And like the cylindrical solids, they have polygon bases or circular bases, but instead ours these are called pyramids and cones. We have similar names, we have bases, we have base edges, we have lateral faces, we have lateral edges, so the vocabulary is very similar to what we talked about in, in Lesson 2, but now we're just referring to the conic solids instead. Here, so this is the vocab as it relates to the pyramid. We still have another piece over here. We, when we have the cone, we still have the lateral edge. We still have a base. It just happens to be a surface. The axis is where we go from the apex to the center of the base, that's called our axis. When the axis is perpendicular to the base, then that means we have a right cone. And when it is not perpendicular, that means we have an oblique cone. Before we look at these pyramids some more, I'd like to just take a moment to orbit around here this three-dimensional pyramid that I have. So you can see right here, there's our apex where we our faces come together. The shape of my base of this is a square. The apex is directly over the center of my base. So if I were to do a height on this, my height would be perpendicular to the base. So this is a right pyramid. It's actually a regular pyramid because my base is a regular square. A square is a regular polygon. So that means I have a regular pyramid I'm going to do a couple of things here. You can see I'm going to unfold this pyramid a little bit so you can kind of see all the triangles come together. So this is what our pyramid looks like if we pull it apart. We have four lateral faces that are all triangles. And you can see they're isosceles triangles. And the shape of my base is a square. And so when this was came all together, my apex of my pyramid was directly over the center of my base, so it was a regular pyramid. When we study pyramids and cones, we will also evaluate different types of heights that our pyramids and cones have. When we talk about the altitude of our pyramid or cone, we talk about the line segment from the apex to the base that is perpendicular to the plane containing the base. So if I take a look here, the line segment from the apex to the base that is perpendicular to the plane. The height of my pyramid is considered to be the altitude. The slant height though is something different. The slant height is the height of the lateral face. So if you just look at this triangle right here, that is the, the altitude or the height of my lateral face and you will see that, that the notation for slant height is often an, a cursive or italics L. So if we think about this question here, which is longer, the slant height or the height of the pyramid? Well, if this is a right triangle, we know the legs of the right triangle are shorter than my hypotenuse. So the slant height would definitely be longer than the, the altitude or the height of the actual pyramid. And the same thing applies to the cone. The height goes from the center of the circle base to the um, perpendicular. I'm sorry, if it's a right cone, it will go to the center. If it's just, if it's an oblique cone, we just drop um, from the apex to the base perpendicular. And so that would give us our height. The slant height is, is the lateral surface from the edge of my base to the apex. That's the lateral height. Or I'm sorry, the slant height. So we have a hierarchy here. If we look at the conic surfaces broken down by cone and pyramid, we have right and oblique again. 
right, a right pyramid would be in which the segment connecting the apex to the center of symmetry of the base is perpendicular to the plane of the base. A right pyramid, pyramid whose base is, reg, is a regular polygon would be a regular pyramid. So just like with the prisms, the right prisms, if the base was a regular polygon, then it would be a regular prism. So that holds true with pyramids. If you have a right pyramid and the base is a regular polygon, then that is now called a regular pyramid. If it's not a right pyramid, then it would be considered to be oblique, kind of off to a slant. And same thing for the cone. We right cone or oblique. The oblique cone goes off to a slant. So we'll explore the actual, um, uh, some better pictures and we'll actually look at three-dimensional figures of oblique and right cones and pyramids in class. I've included a table again to look at, to explore some different pyramids, rectangular, pentagonal, hexagonal, octagonal, and n-gonal pyramids. And, but we will look at those in class because we'll actually physically touch these figures and count faces, vertices, and edges and, and draw a connection between pyramids and prisms and how the sides, the number of sides or faces, edges, and vertices correspond. So I'd like you to stop the video at this time and take a look at the example that we have here, five and six, and then the one at the bottom. I'd like you to try those examples. Remember, there are lots of right triangles around, so you might have to use Pythagorean's theorem again in order to answer these questions. When naming our pyramid or when we're looking and evaluating these different types of questions, it often is helpful to look at the name. We have that it's a regular square pyramid. So being regular, we know that it is also right and we know the base is a square. So keeping that in mind, we know that our base is the bot is we're looking for the square, so that would be a, B, C, D, here down at the bottom. The altitude is our segment that goes from the apex to the base, perpendicular. So the altitude would be segment P, Z. Our slant height is from the apex. It's along the lateral face. So that would be, or that's the altitude of that lateral face. So that would be P, M. And the lateral edge, we have um, four of them. We have P, C, P, D, P, A, and P, B. Those are all the lateral edges. Those are the, the edges that go from the apex to the base vertice. Now it says the lateral faces of the pyramid are right triangles, isosceles triangles, or equilateral triangles. Because we know the base is regular and it's right, then we know that these triangles are all going to be the same. So this side length is going to be the same as this one, and this one, and this one. So this is going to be an isosceles, those faces are going to be isosceles triangles. Let's look at the last example here. The right cone has a height CD of 12 and a radius. The ra if the radius of the base is 4, find the slant height. So the slant height is going to be DE. So DE, we know, we have a right triangle here. So DE squared is going to equal 4 squared plus 12 squared. So DE will equal the square root of 4 squared plus 12 squared. So DE then will equal 4 root 10. This concludes lesson 9-3.